looking back at it now, it has so much meaning. But at the time, it's like, okay, uh, you're doing a pilot. Don't F it up. You know? yeah, you're just a kid trying to do the work and not, not mess it up. Tiger. Dean. Uh, so 2005, I was already on the network uh, on Gilmore Girls and Jensen was on the network on Smallville. I've been living in the, the genre world for a little while. So I was already kind of familiar with that world. I had watched Buffy and Angel and Roswell and Charmed. And then they were talking about a new show, Supernatural. And I was like, you know what? That's not really the kind of show I want to be a part of if I have the, the choice. And my manager was like, no, it's more X-Files than Buffy or Charmed. It treats itself more seriously. It's darker, you know, it's scarier. And I read it and was like, got it, okay. I was wrong, uh, they were right. I was first attracted to kind of the world that it was being told in. And then as I got more familiar with, as I read the script and I saw that the characters and kind of heard Kripke's take on what these characters were loosely based on, which was kind of a Luke Skywalker and a Han Solo, then I was I was full in. I was like, oh, Luke Skywalker and Han Solo in a horror world? I'm in, let's do this. And as a car with guns in the back? Okay. As I learned about the show and who was behind it, I wanted to do everything possible to, to be a part of it. You gotta update your cassette tape collection. Why? Well, for one, they're cassette tapes. Uh, the pilot, going back to that scene at the computer in the library, was obviously super formative and the launch pad. I remember it very, very well. I remember it pretty vividly, as a matter of fact. Yeah. I remember it super nervous. And that was the same day we filmed with, uh, with R.D. Call. That was the day where he locks me in the holding room and it's dad's journal and I see the coordinates and I'm like, yeah, I don't know what that means. And then I picked the lock of the, that was the same day. Back in that scene, we were like, not yet. And now we're washed up. So uh, we've, we've run the gambit. Yeah, and Jared's not an actor. He's got 15 I'm years not, to, go to prove it too. I, yeah, I have 327 episodes to prove it. So you published the Supernatural books? Yeah, yeah, Gosh. these books. You know, they never really got the attention they deserved. I think that's one of the reasons why we have lasted as long as, as we have is because we were a bit of an underdog. I think it allowed us space to play because we weren't dealing with the expectations that come alongside a smash hit show. I think it allowed more creative freedom for us to kind of do with it what we will and do episodes about ourselves and do episodes where we're on different TV shows making fun of CSI Miami or you know game shows. They left us alone and let us do our thing. And I think that really allowed us to find our legs, to find our audience, and to continue doing this for as long as we have. And I think because we were a little off the radar for a lot of people, it made people get excited about something that they thought, you know, they found, they discovered. Because we were kind of fringe for a while, our supporters really fought for us and really put in groundwork. But we were putting in the hours. You know, Jensen and I, especially in those first couple of years, it was just he and me. It became clear to us that we weren't doing it for the accolades because even though we didn't have the legacy I guess we have now, we still were there every day, bleeding and sweating and crying for this show and for these characters and for these stories. Who are you? Castiel. Yeah, I figured that much. I mean, what are you? I'm an angel of the Lord. We knew we were setting out onto a different path or a, a larger path, not just hunting monsters and ghosts and creepy crawlies. It was, now we're dealing with heaven and earth and hell and demons and angels. I think season two, that kind of dealt with an angel. And so we had tested the waters. So the introduction of an angel and one that is earthbound and also now befriending the, the brothers definitely opened up this world. It was a very technically challenging first scene uh, that I shot where I was like coming through these barn doors, there were sparks flying down from the ceiling, showering on my scalp. I remember it was like singeing. I was like, ow! And then I got stabbed in the first scene. And so I thought, gee, like, what, what have I gotten myself into with this show? And Misha came in with this unique approach right off the bat, which I, it didn't, it didn't read like that on the script and it wasn't described to be uh, as such. But he came in with this, you know, I'm the one that gripped you. And it was like this weird, like, robot voice. I'm the one who gripped you tight and raised you from perdition. And I'm like, what is, what is this guy doing? Has he ever acted before? And I remember thinking, like, oh, well, this character's not going to last long. It was truly trial by fire in the very first scene. And yet, I remember thinking how warm and welcoming and inviting the cast and crew were. I didn't know that I was going to be sticking around on the show for a, a long run. When I first started my first episode, I thought I was going to be there for two more episodes after that. So yeah, it, it turned into quite a run. 12 years later, uh, I'm, I'm really happy it went that way because my initial concern, honestly, 
was that it was going to close some doors, that we were going to become kind of this religious show. But it ended up opening so many doors, not the least of which is the fact that, you know, people can die and come back because we have help from up above and then sometimes down below. So it ended up being the, the best move we made, and that was a critical point. It would end up being you two. Oh, I love you guys. <clears throat> oh, okay, okay, all right, okay. When Cass started on the show, he saw his garrison of military angels as his family. And I think Cass spent the first decade or so uh, that he was with the boys feeling like he wanted to be a part of that family, but not really feeling like he actually was a part of the family. And in the last couple of years, uh, I think that there was something about the introduction of Jack as a character and the way he was really ingratiated into the family. I think that somehow marked a transition for Castiel. Yeah, that was the last episode of season 12, which they'd been kind of pushing towards this birth kind of throughout the season. And my first day on set was pretty interesting because I showed up and I went, where's my wardrobe? And they went, there is none. I'm like, oh, okay. So walking on set, you know, in a robe, uh, near naked in front of uh, 150 new friends was definitely a little nerve wracking. Obviously you want to impress people because it's your first day and you want to nail your take and make sure you know your lines and make sure you don't suck in front of, you know, all your new friends. But yeah, right away I knew just that the character was going to land or not land, depending on if people had room in their hearts for a new, new dude on the show. It was an interesting moment of transition for the Winchesters and for Cass because we were for the first time stepping into the role of parent and caretaker, you know, and, and it was a it was a natural evolution, but it definitely changed the dynamic because we we went from like just being these sort of foot soldiers to being parents. Right after kind of season 13 first aired, people were pretty thrilled about the character and they were really nice about it, just despite the fact that, you know, my character could be the potential end of the universe for them. For me, I don't know, I wasn't looking for acceptance necessarily. I was looking for, can I be a useful wheel in this machine? So I was just, I was thinking to myself, if I can be useful, then maybe there's a place for me. What it turned into was so much more than that. It's been so, so special and something that I could have never expected would happen. That though we're very, very excited about moving into our 15th season, mm -hmm. um, it will be our last. I had kind of been saying goodbye to this show for a while now, probably ever since in season 14, we made the video saying, hey, season 15 is gonna be it. I think that was the first commitment to like, okay, this isn't gonna be for the rest of my life. I've, I've been living with this character for so long that it is he, he's ingrained in me i don't know that i'll ever be able to say goodbye because you know he's just going to be part of, of everything and you know i'm cool with that because this has been this is a, a character that's that's changed my life i cried plenty of tears during uh the COVID quarantine and i i laughed the laughs and the script called for it uh but then during the filming of the show sam didn't know it was the end of the series right so we had to kind of uh between action and cut just do what the characters would do, live in the moment and do what was required of, of the characters. My last day on set was actually uh, kind of weird because I had only one shot to do and my shot had no dialogue. I think a lot of the emotion came after they called rap and I didn't believe it. And then I think a lot of us have been processing all of kind of the after effects of it now that we've wrapped. I don't think that the show would have lasted as long as it has were it not for the fact that the environment on set was just so much fun and i mean i can't tell you how many times jared has ruined takes just to get a laugh out of me or the crew <laughs> 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 It has been a tremendous amount of fun. And I don't I will never have that opportunity again, I don't think, to, you know, play a character for twelve years. It just doesn't happen. Well, I've been saying for months the end has no end. What people have built around this show is is truly endless and that's kind of what I mean by that. And also like no one knows what the future holds. Uh, I know a lot of different people have had their own iterations of what they could do for like a six episode kind of one-off kind of thing. If they can reboot uh, the Karate Kid with the same cast 30 years down the road, then certainly not impossible that Supernatural could have another iteration at some point in the future. No, Misha's just thinking about his retirement plan. He's like, he's like, okay, I'm 70. Um, 
Stallone this trench coat. What do I do? I think it was Sylvester Stallone when he won an award. He said his favorite imaginary friend he's ever had in his life is Rocky. And I, I think that that's, that's a beautiful sentiment because these are characters that we have gotten to live with and the fans have gotten to live with for so long that I will happily take take this uh, with me forever. And I'm just also bad with goodbyes. Uh, so my, my goodbyes look like this, see you later. And I feel that, I, I do feel like I will be seeing all of those faces that I get to work with for 15 years, I'll be seeing them later. And Dean, I, you know, if I never get to play him again, I know he's always, he's always right there.